Hello. <clears throat> Today, what I want to do is talk about stand initiation stage, and uh, this is the beginning of a series of lectures about how a stand develops. Uh, I just threw this picture in first because I've shown it over the last couple of years. It's so neat. It's a picture a student sent from out west, and here you can see all the deer underneath the uh, trampoline. How does it relate to this lecture? Absolutely not at all. Anyways, I just interesting picture where you can get a where deer can rest and, uh, and have their own little, you know, solar protection. Anyways, <clears throat> we're going to talk about stand initiation and stage and we're going to proceed all the way to uh, old growth. So, these, uh, <clears throat> all these, uh, this lecture series is based on four stand dynamics, the chapters two and three, and I've provided that for you guys in, um, as one of your readings. Well, actually, these are chapters, but if you're interested in buying that book, it's about a hundred bucks, and it's a good book, fairly sci uh, fairly technical, but it's it is one of the best books on forest dynamics I've seen around. Now, in regards to what we're going to talk about today, is stand initiation, and what we mean by that is how does the stand start establishing itself? And the first way we're going to look at it is, is assuming that the site has, there is no older trees and all the mature trees have been removed and you're starting off with a clean slate. So that's how we're going to start the stand initiation stage. And as you can see here, as you go across this way, uh, we have stand initiation stage, and we're going to talk about that in this lecture, stem exclusion stage. Okay, where there's competition, understory initiation stage, and old growth stage. So that's the ones we're going to go through in this set of uh, about four lectures. Okay. So stand initiation, what we want to do is we want to talk about it for single cohort stands. In other words, stands which have basically one that all there's no overstory there and it's a really you have to watch that because a single cohort stand I bet a lot of you are already envisioning an even age stand and all the trees are of the same height or even same age and that is not correct so first of all how does one of these single cohort stands begin well it's usually after major disturbance and we've had a lecture on that and, and discussed it in actually multiple lectures. And what kind of vegetation comes after a major disturbance? Well, it's a large <clears throat> variety of tree tolerances. <clears throat> Do not be fooled that just because it's open area that only the intolerant trees can live there. That is a totally false idea. They are the ones who can best compete in the open because they're faster growing and more aggressive in those situations as compared to the tolerant trees. But there's all types of trees will establish themselves after a major disturbance. What kind of shrubs? Taller shrubs <clears throat> will, will be certainly there as will there be smaller ones like blueberries, vicinium. Herbaceous we're going to have lots of flowering flowering plants, ferns, and, and you can see here the herbaceous layer is very, very aggressive. So, in other words, after major disturbance, it's a free-for-all. All these different uh, trees, shrubs, and herbaceous plants will take opportunity if they have the capability to do that. So, <clears throat> Again, like I alluded to before, the, uh, the perception is that the age range can be very narrow, but in actual fact, the age range can be very wide. Here is typically what we think of, of you know, after major disturbance here, you see some red pine planted, and it's all about the same age. That's if it was human, if humans get, go in there and we plunk all these trees in, they're probably about... You know, there's a difference of an hour before they're stirred up uh, from the point when they were established. But in nature, it is quite different on many, many sites. <clears throat> so,
So let's go back to one thing that's really amazing about tre trees is how tiny they are when they start out. When you think about it, a tree, you know, comes out of this little wee thing, this little wee seed, and those tiny trees are have a battle for a long time, and we easily forget about that. Like one of the huge, the largest competitions they have in the stand initiation stage is competing with the herbaceous plants, like bracken fern, right? So a raspberry, or you can look at it this way, raspberries can kill off trees that can potentially be 200 feet tall, and this would be out west. <clears throat> so at, at the stand initiation stage, it's a really different game. Trees really have to struggle to get past all the competition, and that has a great influence on how it, the stand initiation stage occurs. One of the most crucial factors uh, with stand initiation stage is microsite. It, 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 you know, <clears throat> the I really like this comment that a few centimeters can make a huge difference uh, where the, if the tree lives or not. Like here's a little moisture site. You know, if it lands back here, maybe it's just a little bit too dry and gets the root, uh, the little tiny seed, the root radical uh, dries out and the tree dies. So it makes it, the micro site is a huge, huge issue for those little wee seeds. The, in the, so what happens in the initial years of, uh, during stand initiation? What happens? Um, first of all, what challenges, I guess the way to look at it is what challenges do trees have? First one, roots cover very small area. So when you imagine they cover maybe, oh, I don't know, a centimeter, two centimeters. And so they're highly susceptible to changes in moisture content. If the soil is fluffed soil, in other words, if it's been disturbed and there's a lot of air in between, the trees have very poor capillary action, so they die. If, this, if the soil is too sandy, then what happens is it's like there's, what happens is, is uh, sandy soils are like big round ball bearings and the water travels through them real quick and doesn't, it has very poor water retention. So therefore the only very specialized trees like jack pine can survive there. What happens if, in those initial years, if it, if it lands in a depressed area, and I mean like this, the depressed area could be the size of a, of a saucer. It doesn't have to be very big. And it creates anaerobic conditions. In other words, no oxygen for the roots and it dies. What happens if it's out after fire? And some of you guys have been out in fires and those soils can be literally baked. The roots cannot penetrate the soil and the little seeds, trees die. Okay. And if it's out in the open, the trees, the little seedlings are susceptible to incredible range of temperature. And near the ground, the temperatures can be easy 30 degrees Celsius higher than just, you know, about a foot above. And many trees are susceptible if there's a late frost and the shoots have come out, okay, the leaders come out and then there's a late frost because it's a little low spot and it kills off the trees. So there's a lot of challenges for trees when they're initially starting out and that's why for the millions of seeds that every year are dropped by trees, so few can actually take off and, or I guess start growing I should say. Another thing that's interesting in regards to microsites is what can influence, uh, what can influence around the tree. And it depends, you know, for example, let's look at an example. Microsite shaded by a rock, and you go, well, is that shade good or is it bad from that rock? You know, it could be a big rock sitting, let's say, right here, right? And then uh, that rock could be shading this tree. So what, so what does it do? Well, on the um, bad side, okay, on the bad side, it reduces photosynthesis. In other words, that it's being shaded by a rock that may be only a few inches tall, right? On the good side, that that shaded plant is getting less stress from ev evapotranspiration, so improves plant moisture retention. So the 
it's less stress and you can grow quite well. So it all depends. A rock isn't, or whatever the obstacle is, it could be a, hum, uh, a rotten log. It just depends where it's located in respect to the tree that's trying to grow there. So it's very, very sensitive in those first years. Okay, so here are some more examples of rocks or objects, you know, logs particularly, near uh, trees in the early years. So if there are trees uh, is near the microsite, okay, and in other words, the seedling near the microsite faster melt in the spring. So if you have a rock nearby, for example, it would melt quicker, therefore you have increased moisture so the tree can grow better. The rock could be heating the soil right near there, so acting like a little solar. So if we had, um, let's say if I draw quickly a little box here, and then, and if our tree is right here, and if the, and if the sun hits that rock and then comes back and heats that soil, the area right around here is being uh, is being warmed up and it actually makes that tree go faster than trees nearby. So this tree may actually be shorter nearby just because it isn't getting advantage of this little microsite. Okay, things that really slow down tree growth is branches that uh, so large branches can be a benefit or a negative thing for small trees. If it's at fall camp, we ask you to lower, get the branches away from the trees so they can grow, but also branches help deter animal browsing. So they don't like getting into that slash to eat the tops of the trees off, so those trees have a better chance of surviving. Again, microsite it makes all the difference. So as trees grow, as, as you can guess, they're less sensitive to minute microsite changes. If there's a little bit of change in the, mo in the moisture of the soil, it doesn't matter. Root systems are now vast on larger trees and they can take a bit of change. And, and as it states here, because you have an expansive root system. And the crowns are larger, so they can take more advantage of the photosynthesis. Okay, more photosynthesis. And the bark on the tree is heavier, generally on most species, so overheating is less of an issue so less stress on the tree. So as trees get older, they get tougher. Right? So this is a little diagram just to kind of show you what's going on. So if you have this, pretend this is our desirable tree here. Okay, so if this is our desirable tree, this is supposed to be like a conifer. So what happens is, as that conifer grows underneath here, and I'm talking about, this is all about two feet tall, so it's very tiny. So underneath that conifer, what's going to happen? While well, other trees, um, once it bursts out above the competition, the bracken fern or whatever, raspberries, you'll result in more photosynthesis. So this tree will start to take off. Once it has more photosynthesis, that, that leader can grow taller, okay? And now that tree is on its way. It's free to grow, as you guys certainly know now what that means. Right? As soon as it starts to take off, uh, it'll also, of course, meanwhile, get more moisture in the, in the ground. And as it grows and these, and these shrubs grow, you're creating underneath these trees a cooler location where more sensitive plants can start to establish themselves. The typical uh, understory plants you find in a true forest, not out in the field. So all this is influenced as the forest gets a little bit taller and it creates a new microsite underneath the new trees that it just established. So <clears throat> what in regards to rapid change, uh, older vegetation lowers the wind speed, okay, <clears throat> and then as, as I said before, so the older vegetation, like in any forest, the wind speed slows down, which then results in the evapotranspiration, okay, causing evapotranspiration to increase humidity. So now you've got higher humidity in there, and then if you have higher humidity, it's like a greenhouse, so you have less stress on the leaves, and if you have less stress on the leaves, you get more sensitive plants growing uh, 
in the understory. So older vegetation is producing just low shade, okay, which is uh, good for growth. So as you can see here, um, below the ground, which is ever so important at all times, we can't forget about the root systems. And I just wanted that this is not the best diagram, but what's happening is as a tree grows and the roots start to dry out the soil because of uh, respiration, the water table is lowered. Therefore, if the water table is lowered, what happens is more roots begin to grow into the lower levels and so it has an effect of changing the moisture level in the underneath the, the trees. Okay? Interestingly enough near the surface the moisture content is actually a bit higher because of the cool moist site but underground uh, the water table essentially is lowered a bit. This is, <clears throat> okay, this, this guy's thinking really hard here and uh, so you know, uh, where, where is the best place for the tree? So if you had a low spot and a high spot, the tendency, and it is true, when the trees are little, this microsite is ideal because it's a little bit drier here so it's not too wet here, it's a hydric site, so the, very moist, and um, so this becomes a limiting factor for growth. But as the trees grow, the uh, evapotranspiration makes the site droughty. And so over time, the lowering of excessive moisture makes the hydric depression, which is right here, a more mesic site for growth. So just because the root systems are now acting like water pumps and lowering a bit of the moisture in underneath the soil. So it can, uh, trees can influence the moisture content of the area dramatically. So how fast do trees initiate a site? Site in invasion you know, invasion sounds mighty fast, right, when you think about it, but man, it can be slow. Uh, if there's, you know, if you're in these tough conditions, like I listed here, it can be hundreds of years before something, I took, uh, years before anything happens. I took this picture and I went canoeing, uh, where was this, near Killarney, I think, and you can see here that, you know, these trees are just getting established. And this is still at stand initiation. It's probably a hundred years have already gone by. So stand initiation sometimes on poor sites can be uh, a long time. It all depends on the site condition. Sometimes immediate invasion is not an ideal thing to happen. And for example, if you have uh, pinus, in Pinus stro uh, strobus, white pine, we have this nasty little bug, white pine weevil, and if you plant an entire area or area seeded in with white pine, you could actually have um, a lot of tr a lot of invasion of uh, white uh, the weevil, white pine weevil, and then the result is you have a lot of trees killed. So, and where these weevils exist, while well, they stick around in the remnant slash and tops of downed trees and then they can uh, resurrect themselves because then ideal conditions are there to, to kill the leaders, to bore into the apical meristem, the leaders, and kill off the trees. So uh, sometimes we want it a little slower. And, that, and, and how do we deal with this in, with Pinus strobus or white pine? We provide shade for the trees so we discourage this, these white pine weevils who like it out in the sun. So a stand initiation would be a little different. So how, for stand, you know, things that are out there in nature can have an influence for years on, uh, on a tree. So for an example here, you know, if a tree has to come through all this here, this will have a critical impact as, until it finally decomposes. 
And this is why we want the, you know, the slash to be a bit lower. Dead roots, dead tree trunks, dead branches, all can provide a positive or a negative influence on the tree growth. So remember, it isn't just bad. The deer may not be able to get it in there to eat. Uh, you may be providing enough shade to, and moisture for little tree trees to grow. But on the other hand, you may be blocking the leader and getting a leader whip where it damages the, the tree. So it all depends on the microsite at that little tiny spot where that seed landed. And that pretty well covers all the elements I want to address with stand initiation. So stand initiation uh, is a process that can take as quick as two days if it's planted manually or typically it could take 30 years or be stretched out for a couple hundred years if it's a very poor site and microsite on each one of these sites is crucial for the individual trees success in survival. Thank you.